We are back out at the Sanford Dam. I'm sure you can see it over my shoulder here. Before we get this video started, I wanted to thank my Patreons, Scott and Lynn, and for people sending me letters through the mail. So huge thanks to Randy and Kim. Let's get this camera turned around now, and I'll show you a little bit closer what's going on here at Sanford. I'll also get the mic flipped around so you can hear me a little bit better. They are just wrapping up doing the final a uh, few pours on the interior of Sanford Dam back there in the background. You can see the park over here. Some work going on there as well. We will be stopping over there very soon. And we will also be going up to the north, uh, checking out the work that's going on up there on the lake bed. But first of all, let's head on over here, show you guys the temporary bridge really quick. I always usually go over here, take a look at how much water is flowing underneath here. Uh, water level is pretty low right now. We haven't got rain in uh, quite a while. You can see the water flowing through the river channel, the riprap uh, lining each side of the bank here, stopping that erosion from happening. Looks like a little bit of riprap ended up in the center of the channel. And over there in the background, you can see the Sanford Park area. I will start doing updates every week on that as well as work is starting there on Sanford Park. Right now they're just working on getting everything leveled. Let's head on over to Sanford Dam now though and we'll check out what's happening over there. We are over here in Spillway 6 underneath the Sanford Dam. Let's take a look up here. You can see all of the lifts have been finished poured. So demo will be starting here in a little over a month, possibly mid-July if everything goes to plan. You can see that final lift, so this will be the final elevation of the water coming over to the top of Sanford Dam once this is broken away with the breaker on the excavator. So right now the water level is actually a little bit lower on the other side because it's been a while since we had some rainfall. After they go ahead, use the breaker to remove these spillways, then they can go ahead and fill in the earthen embankment, the breach area, and that water will be redirected over the top of the Sanford Dam at that time. Jumping into the drone video now, the drone is facing towards the east. We're probably about 100 to 150 feet in altitude, uh, flying over top of uh, the Titabwasi River, where the temporary bridge is spanning that river uh, right now. That is how the crews are accessing this side of the dam, uh, going over the temporary bridge, and then they can access the west side of the dam. We'll fly right up here in front of the dam, take a look at what they were working on. The day that I was out there filming, there wasn't a whole lot of work going on, but you can see how much progress there truly has been. And if you check into the live camera, you'll see how much progress there has been since I was last out there filming. So all this concrete has been poured. Uh, the sill elevation has also been lowered. So if you want to stay up to date, really up to date on the day-to-day -day happenings, make sure you're checking out that live camera. You know, I can't get out there all the time. It takes me a little bit longer to get these videos edited uh, because we are so busy right now at a time in our life where we are working on uh, building our dream home. We will be moving very soon, hopefully, into that house. So make sure you're checking out those live cameras. And uh, yeah, I'll start gaining altitude here with the drone now. We're probably only about 50 feet in altitude. And you can see right here in front of Spillway 2 was the next area that they were prepping uh, to be poured between the spillway and that sill. You can also see the area that they cleared out trying to pump that water out to get those weep holes bored through that sill uh, for that water that it can drain from underneath these dams. I'll keep gaining altitude. We'll see what things look like from up at height. And if you watch the right hand side of the screen, you will see the old substation. That substation has been completely decommissioned now. You can see there's no longer any wires on it. Uh, not any of the other electrical components that are usually in uh, substations, no transformers or anything like that. I'm panning the camera up to the north and you can see how lush and green that lake bed truly is. It's drying up a little bit now in our summer heat. Uh, we're in a little bit of a drought at the time of me doing this voiceover as well. So things aren't as green as they were a couple weeks ago but yeah these are all pretty much cottonwood willow trees with a few weeds mixed in here and there and now you can look all the way up to the north up the Titabwasi River um, that used to be somewhat of Sanford Lake as well it narrows a little bit the further north you get 
and now Sanford Falls entering the center of your screen right now. Here's what the exterior of the dam currently looks like. We'll go up here and take a quick look at Bay 5. Still has another lift to be poured all the way up here at the top. You can see this ledge here that's supposed to keep out the lampreys. See how wide that is so that they can't go over the top of the spillways. And right here where the old catwalks used to span on the inside, the interior of these dams. Here you can see where that lift will be poured here. A lot of that rebar all tied in now. Sensor able to read the temperature from right there. All right, let's go ahead, look on the exterior of the dam, see the work that's been going on behind the sill. The drone is up at 400 feet in altitude now. You can take in the entire work site here and see where everything is staged. Um, they do have some staging area up in the park in the top right hand corner as well. Actually at the angle that the sun is at right now you can almost see right through the grates on the front of the powerhouse. Uh, you'd be able to see it right in there uh, where those turbines are. Water is very turbid right now. I'm not exactly sure why this is since we haven't had a whole lot of rainfall lately um, but generally uh, the Titabawasi River is a pretty turbid uh, river especially depending on how fast the water is flowing, eroding some of those clay deposits that are then incorporated into uh, the water. So again, great shot. Looking right inside of uh, where those turbines are at, you might be able to see the round structure behind the grate underneath the Sanford powerhouse. We'll pan the camera over here a little bit further, check out all the front of the spillways. You can see that pass-through gate is showing a little bit more with how low the water is. But yeah, keep in mind, I was just standing inside of these spillways, uh, that hollowed out portion, and you can kind of imagine where the water level is on the opposite side of this dam right now. So right now it's pretty low. You can kind of see where the water line typically is, and that is where uh, the line will be when they go ahead, use the breaker, and remove the top of these spillways. That'll be the water level. Uh, that the water is flowing over the top of this dam. I'll go ahead keep panning the camera around. You can see that they did remove a little bit more concrete uh, on the sheet pile that is in the center of the screen right now. And this is the Sanford earthen embankment. You can see how it was completely made out of sand. Uh, the Sanford Falls are over on the right hand side of the screen and another little bit of the staging area here on the west side of Sanford Dam. Great shot of the temporary bridge. You can see the flag uh, still flying high above the bridge and the water that is currently flowing underneath the bridge. I'll start dropping an altitude a little bit further. We will take a closer look underneath this temporary bridge very soon. But before we do that, I'm gonna jump back to the in-person video and show you a little bit more of the work that is going on between the spillways and the sill portion where they are currently working on pouring. Now over here to the east side, you can see the work that has been going on in front of bay one and two. The live camera is right up there on the powerhouse. If you wanna see some of this work. A lot of the rebar that has been poured here between the spillways and the sill, I'm covering up some of the Schedule 80 pipe that is coming from the weep holes directly underneath the dam going out, cord through the sill over to the other side. As promised, here is the shot that I always get flying up the Titabuasi River over Sanford Falls. And you can see how low the water level is. I know I keep saying it, but it is really low right now. I know there was actually a couple people that kayaked over the top of the falls shortly after I filmed this. I didn't get any of it on video. You may have been able to keep see uh, some of it on the live camera, um, but I'm not condoning kayaking over the falls. I believe the Titabawasi River is a public river, so uh, people can do what they want on the river uh, at their own risk. And I'll keep flying up the river a little bit further to the north, and now we are going to fly 
over the lake bed, use the drone to inspect the lake bed. A little bit closer, you can see a couple of those tree stumps uh, still sticking out of the water. You know, it is illegal to go out there and remove the root balls of these stumps, but people are able to go out there and top these stumps. So they can go ahead and do that. If they do do that, it is strongly suggested to remove uh, the log timber off the lake bed as, you know, when the water refills Sanford Lake and any of these lakes, uh, all that timber is going to be floating uh, downriver. There's a little bit of this work going on that you will see at the end of this video. But again, another great shot. You can see the willow trees and the cottonwood trees. The willow trees are the ones uh, with the leaves that are a little bit more narrower. And the cottonwood trees are the ones that have leaves a little bit more round in shape. You can see they're maybe a little bit redder on the new growth. We'll start flying over here to the Sanford Park area. Again, you can check out the lake bed on my way over there. See a couple more of those stumps. Not sure if this area is going to be brush hogged or not. There are a couple areas up to the north that are getting cleaned up uh, and the saplings being removed. There's a couple options that are being looked at to deter the growth before uh, these lakes are able to be refilled. Uh, we'll probably be talking about that in a future video. But over here at the Sanford Lake Park, you can see this used to be the old boat launch on the right hand side of the screen. Boat launch is still there. The docks that were in place have been removed though, and those docks are staged over here on the job site where a lot of the other components are staged. Uh, you can see a little bit of that riprap. Looks like quite a bit of re-rod down there on the left, and a couple uh, pieces of equipment up here as well. Back up here in front of the sill, in front of Sanford Dam, you can see the water that is here in front of the sill. This is where they poured that sill up a little bit higher to protect against some of those flood waters that we were having during the springtime. About two weeks, this sill will be lowered in elevation. They're going to be cutting it down lower. Shouldn't have to worry about any of those flood waters anymore now that it's summertime. You can see these areas where they've been pumping out the water, though, where they were able to core through the weep holes from underneath the dam to this other side of the sill. And right now, these uh, Schedule 80 uh, pipes are capped on this side, but eventually they will be getting a duck bill check valve on this end so that you're able to alleviate some of the pressure from underneath the dam so that you don't get uplift on that dam and allow that water to just drain to this side of the sill. So a lot of great work going on here. Make sure you go down below, tell the workers what great job they are doing here. Both Fisher, Spicer Engineering, Everyone's putting in a lot of hard work here to get this dam rebuilt and Sanford Lake refilled once again. I was just on my way, walking back to my truck. Figured I'd stop over here, show you guys the geese and their goslings that are right here in front of Sanford Dam. All right, I'm gonna go throw the drone up in the air, get some of that aerial video, and then we will head over to the park area and I'll show you the work that is going on over there. I'm now over here in the Sanford Park area. You can see this looks vastly different than the last time I was out here. I haven't been really filming this in a whole lot of detail, but usually when I'm flying the drone, you get an idea of what this area has been looking like. Excavators sitting here right now. There used to be a ton of trees right in here that have been taken out this week. The live camera actually used to be on a tree that was right here in this location. So that has been moved to a new location. So hopefully you guys are enjoying that and enjoying seeing all the demo work going on here in the Sanford Park. So technically the rebuild on this park has not started yet. This is just pre-work getting everything in place before the official start day here. You can see the playground sets still located over here. It looks like they did also put a lot of silt fence along the river path to alleviate some of that runoff so that there's not as much erosion. You can see the Sanford Dam way over there in the background and Saginaw Road that runs through the village of Sanford here. I'm not gonna be walking through the village of Sanford uh, today. I did film that in the last video, so make sure you go back and check out that video if you wanna see 
what the village is looking like. You see a couple more things staged over here on site. The new cement storm sewers, so those will be going in place here in the park as well. It's really exciting to see. I will probably post up a picture right now so that you can see the plans of what this park will look like. Jumping back to the drone video, we are going to check out the park again very soon from the air um, because that is where I am flying to right now. You can see how low the river is with the sandbars uh, protruding out into the center of the river path tree in the bottom left hand corner still in the river path and a little bit of the rest of the equipment that is staged here in the Sanford Park. A lot of this equipment was used to take down a lot of the trees that were in this area. You can see the excavator over here on the left hand side. Uh, moving to the area that I was pretty much standing that's where the uh, live camera used to be located in that area but it also has another great view of the dam as well as all the work that is going on in the park in its current location. So make sure you go ahead, check out the Sanford Park live camera to get keep updated on the day-to-day -day activities and the progress happening in the Sanford Park. Here's a great shot down Saginaw Road. You can look down the entire uh, Sanford Village, see what's happening down there as well. I'll probably have to stop out to the uh, Sanford Community Garden the next time I'm out there. I'm sure they got some stuff growing out there. I do a quick little update on uh, what's planted there and how it is doing. Um, but right now, you can kind of see a little bit more of the park, the playground, the play gym set set down here on the bottom right hand side, and those storm sewers uh, staged over here. The next time that I will be doing an update, probably next week from the time of me filming this voiceover, there's been a lot of progress out here, a lot of progress on the dam. Uh, cutting down the uh, sill height and elevation. So I am very surprised and very soon they should be going ahead, breaking away the top of Sanford Dam, refilling in the earthen embankment and redirecting that water over the top of Sanford Dam once again. You can take a look in the Titabwasi River. A few of those trees that got washed down the river, some of these may have been from the park area and that water that goes down here flows underneath Saginaw Road, and then the railroad bridge in the background is the rail trail. I'm sure there's going to be a few people that comment about the trees being taken down and why couldn't these be incorporated into the final design. I'm not sure, uh, but there's one thing for sure, the new park is going to look great. If you wanna keep updated with what's going on here, make sure you keep an eye on the Sanford Park live camera. There's gonna be a lot of work going on right here in this area in the summer and you will be able to see all that live 24 7 from that live camera i do want to mention though too for uh people that were asking about the an update on the seacord dam live camera we may have some funding coming through to cover the rest of that amount so i might be getting that one installed very soon and there's also some discussion about the smallwood live camera so if funding does come through for both of those live cameras, we will have one set up there on Seacord Dam and one set up there on Smallwood Dam. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you go down below, hit the like button, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. We are almost at 33,000 subscribers. It helps a ton if you guys go ahead and do that and leave any questions and comments you have in the uh, comment section down below. I go through and I read every single one of those. All right, I'll probably jump to some drone video of this area now, and then we will be heading up to the north, and I'll show you the work going on up there on the lake bed. Here's a drone shot of that work that is going on up here to the north on the lake bed. Sanford Dam is way over there in the background, um, exiting the right-hand side of the screen. Just to give you an idea of where this is located, in the bridge here in the background of this shot is US-10 bridge. Uh, so the drone is facing towards the south right now, and we can see this excavator out here on the lake bed going around, picking up a little bit of the timber that's out here. Kind of interesting looking at this part of the lake bed. Um, this is where uh, Sanford Lake used to narrow a little bit. You could see it was still pretty wide, um, but again, I'm not seeing a whole lot of those cottonwood and willow trees like we're seeing closer to the dam. There's a couple spotted here and there, um, but it looks like mostly 
uh, there's grasses growing in this part of the lake bed. I think that would be very interesting if uh, there were some people studying this. I would be surprised if no one is studying this in our local colleges as to see how this lake bed has overgrown, regrown itself um, since the lake has disappeared. Uh, just kind of doing surveys of what has regrown and how fast it has taken to regrow. You can see some more of the equipment that they have staged over here. A bulldozer uh, looks like another uh, piece of equipment that's used for logging to take timber. Um, and then over here on the right hand side is the big log pile. I think I posted some pictures on Facebook of this log pile and there was a few comments of people saying that would be one heck of a bonfire. I'm not sure what their plan is to do with these. I don't think they're going to be burning these on the lake, but I'm sure they will be hauled away. But I agree if that was lit up. Uh, that would be one big 4th of July bonfire. Getting out here a little bit further to the north, you can see uh, the grasses blowing in the wind. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. Make sure you stay tuned as always for the engineering diagrams and details that I will be posting at the end of this video. A few new updates that might be uh, shared in there. And as always, make sure you catch my next video. Always a ton of progress going on out here. A ton of updates that I'm always working on. I will be going back up to Edenville again soon. We will check on uh, how things are regrowing up there and how the lake bed is also faring. And until the next one, I'll see you then. Um, at this point in time, Andy Baxter with GEI, would you like to walk through the um, Sanford Dam alternatives that we talked about? Thanks, Kelsey. Um, all right, so. Uh... Just uh, right in parallel with uh, with Mike, uh, we went through a Sanford Dam uh, alternatives effort uh, this past month. Um, effort will culminate in our meeting, uh, just said two weeks ago. We went through alternatives and and selected one to move forward to progress the 60% design. Uh, at Sanford, we worked, looked at it more of a wholesale uh, alternatives. Um, we had and focusing in on the on the on the gated structure as well as the main embankment, the right embankment. Um, the base design, which is what was presented in the 30%, uh, didn't meet uh, the updated flows, flow requirements. And so we updated that 30% design. Uh, so that's your, your, your eight gates, so modifications to the powerhouse. And the embankment, the right embankment, uh, is an earthen embankment with a, with a 350 foot labyrinth auxiliary spillway, similar to what's at Edenville, what's proposed at Edenville. And that and that labyrinth did get expanded from 250 to 350 feet. Um, and uh, and that that generated this kind of starting point for for the alternatives. Uh, the big change that that went from the third went from the base to the alternatives is the IDF flood elevation um, went from as you can see, 634 and a half to 638. What that enabled us to do was to uh, reduce the uh, primary spillway capacity, uh, meaning at the same capacity, but at the higher head elevation, uh, we were able to reduce the number of gates from eight to six. And then we looked at the at the embankment, and each of the alternatives is a different embankment and auxiliary spillway. So for the first one, we're we're still with the labyrinth. Um, the labyrinth spillway, so you can see the spillway uh, width actually reduces uh, from 350 to 250, and um, and you still you know similar earthen embankment. Uh, alternative two uh, is a is a basically a complete removal of the earthen embankment and replacement with uh, a full RCC structure that extended from glacial till up to uh, up to the to the crest elevation. And you know, through the center of that is a uh, long straight weir um, with a low section in the RCC, which overtops during uh, during the flood events. And then the third alternative is, is taking that same approach with a long with a long weir, and instead of doing the full RCC section, uh, you have the earthen embankment with the RCC overtopping. Uh, we went through this, and I'll talk a little bit later about the selection, but uh, landed uh, for several reasons on. The earth and embankment. We've got a couple of slides now talking about that with the RCC overtopping. So starting from the left embankment, which is at the bottom right of the screen, um, 
you've got the powerhouse with the three uh, with the three um, bays uh, that is you know wholly unchanged. Uh, there'll be some modifications for stability to it, but generally unchanged. And then you have your spillway structure, which currently has six gates or six six bays, and we're we're keeping those six bays and and replacing them with with the new uh, gates, just as you saw at Edenville. Uh, working your way around, you have your low level outlet structure, uh, and then an embankment section, uh, non overtopping embankment section, and then the long weir. So this is that this whole section from uh, from the low level outlet extending through the the turn and and the overflow section and off to the to the right uh, abutment is all RCC um, overtop protected. So we've got we've got a level there. So uh, training wall overtopping and then um, and then right embankment. So you can see the alignment is very similar to what the current alignment of the embankment is. Um, and in general, we've got a, it's going to be a higher embankment to accommodate the higher IDF and uh, and and still pass our, our IDF. OK, next. Here's a cross section through the RCC. Um, and what you're looking at is you have the earth and embankment in yellow. You've got your your sheet pile cutoff wall, uh, which is going in with as part of the stabilization efforts and filter earth and embankment and RCC overtopping. Um, laid down in lifts and uh, and placed across. In the background, you see uh, as a, a hard line is that is the training wall, and then uh, the non overtopping embankment is the dash line. So, uh, in general, you know, very similar to what was what was pre flood, uh, except it's going to be a taller structure. And now we've armored uh, both the uh, non over overtopping and the over and the overtopping section meaning the auxiliary spillway um, with the RCC embankment, RCC protection. Selection criteria, uh, similar to, to Edenville, the main difference here is that uh, is the bottom bullet, um, which looks at um, is dam safety and, and, and resilience to greater flood conditions. This is the last dam in the line. Uh, and so what we looked at here said, you know, you know, we have IDF conditions and that's our design criteria. However, um, we, you know, we've got several structures upstream, and we want to look at this as, as, as potentially being more resilient to um, to a higher flood uh, flood condition. We don't have uh, M30 issues, um, and so we didn't we didn't need to look at those. Thanks. So conclusion, you know, we we went through that process. I didn't have the have the uh, the numbering here, but that uh, alternative three landed up top. And the reasons were related to the, the cost effective um, and low construction risk. So, so that specifically relates to the powerhouse itself by not having to do modifications to the powerhouse, reduce uh, risk there. And then the other big part of that is that we don't have to excavate to glacial till along the entire embankment length. Um, and so the dewatering requirements, the, the uh, foundation exposure, uh, all that kind of we, we mitigate we mitigate those those risks with this alternative, um, and yet we still provide uh, not just the the needed level of protection, but some additional protection in in the event of a, of a higher flood condition. Uh, as Mike said, we we presented this on Friday on uh, last Friday uh, to Eagle and Acom, and um, we're in a similar boat where we're we're just about completed with a report which uh, which presents these figures as well as as a discussion of our analysis. Thanks for watching and make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Also make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next videos I will be posting and leave your questions, comments, and suggestions below. As always, I just want to give a massive thanks to the people who support me on Patreon. Never underestimate the value of your contribution to keeping this channel going. Thank you.